when you start adding more and more tasks to the project schedule that you are building, you will need some way to organize your tasks. The feature project provides to do that is summary tasks. Here on this view, this entry called on-site requirements gathering is actually a summary task. It is a way in which we can visually and logically club the next few tasks together. On the Gantt chart to the right, you can see that the summary task is represented by a black bracket. The tasks which come under this summary task are called subtasks. In this context, we have brought the tasks of a particular phase of the project together under one summary task called as the on-site requirements gathering. You might use summary tasks similarly for any other logical grouping. For example, for all tasks done during night shift or all tasks done by a particular team. There are many ways in which we can start using summary tasks. Let us first see a case with existing tasks. I have these two tasks here that I will bring under a summary task. First, I select the task and then on the task button on the ribbon, I just click on the summary button. Now, you can see a few things added. A black bracket that groups these two tasks on the Gantt chart and a new summary task on the table here. We will give this a new name. I will call this summary task as test case design. There is one more way in which we uh, to create summary task and that is by using the indent outdent feature. But that works more on an intuitive method. For example, when I outdent a task, it might become a summary task provided it has tasks immediately following it. You can use the indent outdent for organizing your tasks visually, but be aware that you may you might create summary tasks inadvertently. A great feature of summary tasks is that you can capture some additional project information inside them. For example, for the summary task test case design, suppose the customer has allowed us two weeks to get right. And my internal team has estimated seven days as shown here. Then I can capture this information like this by directly modifying the summary task as some 10 days. What happens in that case is the Gantt chart now shows a new icon. A new teal colored bar has been added. You can see the black bracket has expanded to show 10 days and the teal color task bar is seven days long. And there is a gap between the two that shows a buffer period between the two icons. This can also work the other way around. Suppose the QA team now re-estimates their task to 15 days. As soon as I enter this, I see the red conflict highlighted on the Gantt chart. This is now a great way in which you as a project manager can quickly identify scheduling problems on the project and work towards resolving them. Summary tasks are an important tool in design. They allow a top-down planning approach on your building a project plan where you start with the high-level tasks and keep on breaking them into smaller and smaller tasks until you achieve the required amount of detail. Now, before we end, we will look at some best practices. Subtasks and summary tasks only create structure, but they don't create task dependencies. You can see this immediately in these two subtasks. You can see even though they are under the same summary task, they are not linked together. 
you will still have to link tasks explicitly. When you move or delete a summary task, project moves or deletes all of its subtasks. Before you delete a summary task, outdent the subtasks you want to keep. Avoid assigning resources to summary tasks. Assign them to subtasks instead. Or you might not be able to resolve over allocations. We will look at this more when we come to resource allocation lessons, but keep this in mind. So in this lesson, we have seen how to use summary tasks, how they can be used to organize tasks visually, hold additional scheduling information, and finally we saw some best practices for using summary tasks.